Hello everyone, this is Dan at Evolving SEO. This is now the fifth attempt at this video. I just tweeted that I might finish this video. Uh, shout out to Wistia who retweeted that tweet and uh, that gave me a little encouragement to jump back in and uh, try to finish this one up. So what I, want, what I wanted to talk about today, now for the fifth time, was the difference between Webmaster Tools average position data. I'm thinking in my head about Wistia has this great video where they talk about getting loose on camera. Uh, you should definitely check that out if you can. I'm just kind of laughing at, what if I were to do that right now? It'd probably be pretty funny. But uh, Webmaster Tools has this thing called average position. And I've seen quite a few people out there kind of ask, they're, they're questioning the validity or the accuracy of the Webmaster Tools data, which kind of implies another question, and that is, should you use the average position data in place of rankings? And my short answer to this is no. The average position is a much different metric than rankings. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use each one. But first, let's talk about why they're different. Just kind of like the name implies, average position, if it, I mean, if it was rankings, Google Webmaster Tools would probably call it rankings. So the difference is the average position is only giving you a number based upon if you happen to rank in Google, in reality, like if a real user searches for something on Google, and your website ranks on page 1 or 20 or wherever, if it ranked, then you get kind of a checkbox in that average position. Uh, you get a number for that specific search. It's not tracking when you're not ranking for something. So if it's off-season, if your site is brand new and it's not quite uh, picking up the authority yet to actually uh, show up in any impressions, you're not going to have an average position number. However, if you're tracking rankings, and I suggest using a daily rank tracker, my favorite, of course, being Authority Labs, which I, I've used for over two years now, and I, I love that rank tracker. Uh, it's going to check your ranking every single day, no matter if people are actually searching it in Google or not. So you're going to get a ranking every single day since you set up the campaign. And Webmaster Tools does not do that. It's only when you trigger an impression. Uh, another big thing that's different is Google Webmaster Tools is going to, I'm brewing some tea here. If you don't mind, I'm going to pour it while I do this video since it's already the fifth take. And let's just kind of uh, let everything happen. Why don't we? If the phone rings, I'll answer it. If someone knocks at the door, I'll get the door. I'm just pouring my, I'm spilling my tea everywhere, by the way, because uh, I, want to try to do it quickly as not to waste your time, which I've already kind of done. Can you tell I've been up since about 5.30 this morning? That's kind of what we do here in the SEO world. Wipe this up. I happen to have some napkins. Anyways, then after that tangent, uh, the next big difference between Webmaster Tools data and rankings data is that, uh, can I set the record for like the world's longest tangent in an SEO video? Uh, cheers, everyone. It's tasty stuff. Uh, the next big difference, which, which you've all been waiting for for now over a minute, is that Webmaster Tools is going to average all the times that you show up, whether the search has been personalized, localized, based upon someone's search history, and the big one is if you're logged into Google Plus using Search Plus Your World, we know rankings can be very different than when you're not logged into Google Plus and Search Plus Your World. So Webmaster Tools is taking into account all the different personalization factors that go into the ranking. Rank trackers are not, they're attempting to do the opposite. They're attempting to uh, neutralize all the data that they're giving you. They're attempting to take out localization factors, personalization, Search Plus Your World, to give you a very consistent number. So the two metrics are very different for those reasons. Another big thing being that Google Webmaster Tools, they are not giving you data past a 90-day period. That is much different than rank tracking because you can keep that data as long as you want. It's yours uh, once you've been tracking it. And so with Webmaster Tools, you've got to keep going in there and downloading it every 90 days. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose that data. So lots of differences. But uh, next, let's get into... Uh, 
how I would use these two different sets of data differently. Let's start with Webmaster Tools. So again, you've got to understand what the average position actually is. It's not tracking rankings. And I want to encourage you to not use the term rankings as if it's a syn synonym for Webmaster Tools average position. A couple of quick things you can do with Webmaster Tools. It is awesome for content research and keyword research. I'm sure many of you have experienced going into Webmaster Tools and finding a whole bunch of search queries that you never uh, saw during keyword research, never found uh, doing any kind of content research, but you put out a blog article or a, a post and you see all these queries show up that you didn't expect. Some could be spun off into new articles. Some you may see, huh, if I kind of tweak my existing article a little bit, make sure that I'm kind of covering these different variations of keywords that are showing up. Uh, Jason, I'm not sure if I'm going to say your last name right, Akadra, A, it's like A-I-D, you know, some people I've never even met in person, so I don't even know how to say their last name, and I greatly apologize for that. But he has a great post, which I'll link to, that talks about some ways that you can take these long tail insights and rework them back into your content to capture a whole bunch of long tail traffic. And I'll link to that. Uh, so Webmaster Tools is great for this content research, ideation, keyword research. It's also really good if you're going to pull that data into your content audits. So my typical content audit for clients is going to be a database, an Excel spreadsheet of all the website's content. And I'm going to collect that with analytics metrics, Screaming Frog, Crawl data, and Webmaster Tools data. And if you know how to read the data correctly, you can line that up with other metrics with your content on it and make some really great decisions about should I leave this page indexed? Should I no-index it? Uh, should I remove it entirely from the website? Should I maybe consolidate certain pages? These are the kind of decisions we're making in a content audit, and the Webmaster Tools data can greatly help out with that, with those decisions. On the other hand, rankings. This is, as you're going to see in a second, the applications, I believe, are much different. The uses are much different. So remember, with rankings, we're tracking that uh, on a daily basis. We've proactively put keywords into our ranking tool that we want to pay extra attention to uh, to track on a daily basis. So what I use rank trackers for are, first of all, being alerted to certain things, certain shifts maybe. Maybe there was an algorithm update, a panda, a penguin. Who knows if we're ever going to see another penguin update. But maybe something happened on Google's end that triggered a change with high volume keywords that you're tracking. That can alert you to, oftentimes quicker than Anything else, that can alert you to an issue that you need to pay attention to, uh, whether that's a penalty, an algo change, competitors rising in the search results, bumping you down. It's also a great way to investigate uh, things that you can do, areas of opportunity to improve your website. So if you're tracking rankings on a bunch of different topics that you're trying to rank on your site, maybe your an e-commerce site, and you're tracking women's clothes, men's clothes, uh, kids' socks, uh, adult socks, whatever all the keyword categories are. Um, I'm sure if I was a little more awake, I'd come up with better categories. Uh, blue men's socks. Uh, cheers. You can try to look for areas, you know, maybe men's socks are ranking really well, and maybe women's socks are the areas that's not. And so now you have a prioritization of where you can focus some energy. You can dive into the search results and see why the competitors are ranking for women's socks better than you are, and maybe you're not. The last bit of advice is definitely set up some rank trackers, which apparently have been sitting over here the entire video, and Webmaster Tools is to my left, to your right. I think to your right, if I'm getting that correct. And it's very important, I believe, to set up rank trackers, to not think of Webmaster Tools as rank tracking, Again, thanks Wistia for retweeting my, uh, my tweet there. I think this video came out pretty decently. Uh, I am practicing getting better on video, so hopefully you'll see continued progress with that. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, say hello on Twitter. Ask me questions, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.